Fog. 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 But what is a fog? Fog is visible aerosol consisting of tiny w No, shut up, that's boring. Fog is when game fade out when far away. But my fog was a direct one-to-one -one copy of the sky behind it. And that is bad for two reasons. The first being that it essentially had to render the skybox twice. And the second is that, well, fog isn't just a one-to-one -one copy of the sky behind it. So I started to do some research on how other games achieve this. And I found a talk by Naughty Dog, and they talk about how they render the skybox first into a cube map, and then project that not only onto the sky, but also onto the fog. A cube map, for anyone who doesn't know, is essentially just a 360 degree texture. But an important thing about this is that cube maps can store what are called MIPS, and this is essentially just lower resolution versions of the primary image. This is key to implementing fog. In their talk, they show a little formula, and this is used to determine which MIP of the fog cube map should be used for the fog. To quickly sum up this formula, it figures out which MIP of the fog texture to get by finding the depth of the current pixel, then it gets a value between 0 and 1 by seeing how far between the camera's far and near planes that depth value is. After that, it just multiplies that 0 to 1 value by the amount of MIPS we have stored for the fog texture. With all of that, it can sample a specific MIP of the fog texture to show in the world. Which is exactly what I was missing. The fog should use a lower resolution or a blurrier version of the sky. So I got this implemented and set up with all the values that I wanted. And here's the final result. It looks much more convincing as fog and it doesn't have to be rendered twice. Now for something a little bit less technical. I made some UX changes to the character creator. So the first one I made was to add a little slider at the bottom. This allows you to spin your character around so you can see it from all different angles as you're creating it. And the second was for this little button up here. From the icon, I'm sure you've guessed what it is by now, but in case you haven't, it's a randomizer button. It essentially just grabs a random element from each option and also generates random colors for the hair, the eye, and the skin. It then takes all of those values and applies them onto your player character. I can see some absolute monstrosities coming out of this thing. Speaking of character changes, I also wasn't very happy with the lack of feedback in the combat system. I've updated it so now enemies will react a bit more when they get hit. This comes in two steps. The first is that they will flash red when they take damage, and the second is that they'll have a bit of knockback as well. The latter was surprisingly difficult to get working, and this is because of Unity's nav mesh agent, which is used to allow characters to pathfind around the world. The problem with it is that it forces the character with the component on to stick to the ground, meaning any vertical force that you apply, whether through the rigid body or whatever, simply won't appear on the character, but that's programming, I guess. I've also finally got key bindings in Sundermead. Here's the UI if you're interested, it's very similar to what I went over in the last video. It saves it all to a JSON file and then loads that back in at the beginning of the game. I won't go too much into it because Unity has tons of helper functions and uh, their documentation is really good. I've got no idea how to segue into different topics, so uh, here's my Discord. I regularly upload leaks here, so if you want more granular updates or just to come and talk about the game, this is the place for it. As well as that, I've got a Steam page, so if you like the look of Sundermead, why not give it a wishlist and you can also tickle that subscribe button too while you're at it. Now for the map. In my last video I briefly spoke about it and that I added a basic implementation for the demo. Well now I've given it a nice little upgrade. Previously the position of the map was static to the player and you could only zoom in and out. Now I've made it so you can actually pan around with the mouse within a certain radius of the player. You can also place and clear waypoints just by clicking. This allows you to explore the world and see what's around you much more easily. But it's not overpowered because of the fact that you can only go a certain radius away from your position. And like before, there's still a limit to how far you can zoom out. Any player's positions will stick to the edge of the screen if they go off it, as well as your bed and the summoning stone. But at the end of the day, I think it will still help players out, especially when they've got lost and they can't find their way back to their village. The last couple of changes I made to the game were to the terrain system. The first was to do how it was networked. I found that just before releasing the demo, the networking system was absolutely f This is why I had to disable it for the demo. Well that's fixed now, but in the process of fixing it, I found an issue with the terrain, which was that there was a lot of latency between when a player dug on their screen and it showed up on another person's screen. That's obviously not good. I looked into this and it's because the packet size for the terrain was absolutely huge. 
So how it used to work was when a player dug, it would send the entire chunk to the server, and then the server would send that entire chunk to the rest of the clients. That's bad because these chunks are quite big. Now at the time I wrote this, it wasn't too bad. There wasn't that much data in it. It was just height data. But as the game has progressed, I've added more and more. I've added the biome system, I've added the state system. And over time, these terrain chunks have become much, much bigger. Now it's not gonna sound like a lot, but these packets were 2.4 kilobytes. Like I say, it doesn't sound like a lot, but considering this is a game where there is real-time updates going on, that is quite a lot. So I decided the system needed a whole rewrite. How it works now is when a piece of terrain is changed, it just sends that bit of terrain, meaning the world position and what changed, whether it be the state or the height, the biome can't change luckily, so I don't need to worry about that. And after I made those changes, the packet sizes are now 16 bytes, which is quite an improvement. <laughs> and the other change I made to the terrain was something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I just wasn't sure how to approach. And this was to allow players to dig little paths into the terrain. So I was stuck on this until a member of my Discord came up with the idea of changing any dug tiles into dirt. I love this idea and realized that I could actually hijack this for my path system. Firstly, the new digging system. When you dig now, any grass will change into dirt and that clears any grass models you have there. Around three days later, grass will grow back and it will be green again. So how can I use this for a path system? Well, what I've done is I've made it so if you hold down shift while you're digging, it won't actually dig up or down, it'll keep the terrain height level, but it will change the state of where you dug to dirt thus allowing players to make these nice little paths here. These paths are also subject to grass growing back on them, so you'll have to remember to maintain them over time. And that's it for this update. In the next version, I plan to completely overhaul my character inviting system, as well as adding a completely new intro. But in the meantime, you can check out my demo on Steam. It's a couple of versions behind feature-wise, but it will still give you a very good idea of what the game is about and how it will feel when it's released. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I've got a playlist full of Sundamy videos if you want to go on a little binge, it'll be pretty good. And I hope to see you in the next video.